To truly understand vectors, we have to start with vector search. And vector search is a technique used in information retrieval and machine learning to quickly locate items in large data sets. It does this by storing and grouping items based on their vector representations. And these representations, also called vector embeddings, are strings of numbers that correspond to the many attributes of an item, whether that item is a word, image, audio, or video file. For example, the vector embedding of an image of a bird by a lake could describe the bird's blue color, its slender shape, and possibly its variety. It could describe the sunny late site setting, the blue sky, and a myriad of other attributes. All of these attributes are assigned numbers in vector embeddings, which are usually generated by sophisticated machine learning algorithms running on neural networks, and they can be hundreds or even thousands of numbers long. Now, a computer running a vector database can use the embeddings to group, compare, and quickly locate items based on nuanced, hierarchical relationships. In its essence, vector embeddings are arrays of real numbers, and the process of generating a vector for a data object is called vectorization. Vector search is sometimes called similarity search or nearest neighbor search based on the way it facilitates the grouping and matching of items to speed that search process. So if someone searches for an image of a singing bird near a lake, the vector search system will quickly and accurately find images stored near those words in the vector database index. Now that you know about vectors, let's dig into how and where these vectors are stored and accessed. Vectors are typically stored in databases that support vectors or a new type of database called a vector database. Previously, typical databases were either online transaction processing or OLTP, and these were used for rapid day-to-day -day transactional processing or online analytical processing called OLAP. These were databases used for data analysis of large data sets and to generate insights. Now, these are not the only databases that are out there. There are other databases such as graph databases, but these two are the most typical and commonly used today. OLTP and OLAP databases typically store data in tables in rows and columns. These are also known as records and fields, or in cubes of multidimensional data in the case of OLAP databases. OLTP uses a highly normalized relational structure with tables linked by primary and foreign keys that ensure data integrity. OLAP uses a denormalized structure with data organized in cubes across multiple dimensions such as time, product, or location, and allows for easy slicing and dicing of data. Vector databases, on the other hand, are specialized types of databases designed to store and query high dimensional data represented as vectors. And these databases are optimized for handling operations like similarity search, where the goal is to find vectors that are close to a given query vector according to a distance metric, such as Euclidean distance or cosine similarity. Vector databases are designed to store vectors with many dimensions, which are often the result of embedding processes in machine learning models. For example, word embeddings in natural language processing might have hundreds of dimensions. Vector databases use advanced indexing techniques such as KD trees, ball trees, or locally sensitive hashing or LSH to facilitate efficient searching. Some also use approximate nearest neighbor algorithms, or ANN, to speed up search times at the cost of some precision. They're also built to handle large scale data sets efficiently, making them suitable for enterprise level applications where millions or billions of vectors need to be stored and queried. And this is crucial for applications like image document retrieval, recommendation systems, and natural language processing. You'll also find databases that aren't specifically a vector database, but support vectors as a type. Some databases are built to handle vector embeddings as well as both transaction and analytics processing. They allow you to store and search vectors, and since you're searching in the same database where your other data is stored, there's usually more efficiency in your queries and decreased latency. And who doesn't like faster? 
Now that we've covered vectors and vector databases, let's talk about how you can search the content in those databases. Here's an example of a vector embedding for a dog. Now each of these numbers represent a specific feature or dimension of a dog. And when a query is made, the words of the query are transformed into a vector embedding and placed in a vector database in the same high dimensional space as the items in the dog data set. A high dimensional data refers to the data sets with large number of features or attributes of an object. In this example, a dog's feature could be represented by vectors for its eye color, fur color, coat type, body length, body shape, size, or, or any other factor. The database indexes this collection of features in a high dimensional space where it can use distance metrics and similarity measures to return dogs with fur color close to the query words in the index. Let's take a look at an example of some text and their features in a vector embedding. And for illustration purposes, let's use dog, bird, ice, and watch as the items or objects to search in a vector database. Embeddings are generated such that two objects with similar semantics will have vectors that are close to each other. That is, they have a small distance between them in the vector space. So when you do a search query for animals, you can see from the elements of the vectors that the closest matches are dog and bird. But I bet you're wondering, where do these numbers come from? Vector embeddings are generated by a model for each query and object and how efficiently they search within large data sets. Vectorization techniques vary, and that is why some models, such as GPT 4.0, are wildly more popular than others and a closely guarded secret. Embeddings translate this high dimensional data into a more manageable, lower dimensional vector form that's more suitable for machine learning and data processing applications typically through neural network models. In the real world, you'll find vectors used everywhere. In search engines, vector databases can be used to improve search results by finding documents or images that are semantically similar to the query. If you've ever listened to a music streaming service, they're used to recommend artists or songs based on the similarity of music that you already listen to. Vector databases store word embeddings, sentence embeddings, or document embeddings to support tasks like semantic search, text classification, or translation. In image retrieval systems, vector databases store image embeddings generated by convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, to find visually similar images. Vector databases are crucial for applications that require fast and efficient similarity search over high dimensional data. They leverage specialized indexing and search techniques to provide quick access to similar items, enabling enhanced performance for various machine learning and AI-driven applications. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see additional videos like this in the future. We'll see you next time.